as I said earlier, we can start with the sequence pretty much anywhere. Formally, we say it always we always start at one, but we can always shift a little bit the starting point. But the important thing is that this sequence will consist of numbers which are going to be there all the way to infinity. And so the key question that we're going to be asking about the sequences is what happens to the terms a n as n becomes large, and in fact as n goes to infinity. Okay. So. Uh, for instance, in a situation like this, let's say that this is a sequence we're looking at, or this is the graph of the sequence when it begins. Our question is not so much how much is the sequence at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but what happens to this sequence as I keep going, right? Um, in fact, computing the value of the sequence at any one particular position is something which is quite easy. Uh, all we have to do is just uh, <coughs> compute the formula, the, the formula that defines the sequence. Uh, and have enough patience and enough time to do it. But the question is, uh, what happens when this sequence goes to infinity? Because that's the one place where we cannot go even if we have all the time in the world. Because our interest is in what happens to the function when n becomes big, uh, we may be interested in finding out if there are some properties of this sequence which may not be true at the beginning, but it may, they may be true from some point and all the way to infinity. So we have a word for that. We're going to say that a sequence has a certain property eventually if it has that property for from some point on. Okay, so for instance, if you look at this particular sequence that you have, uh, this sequence is a function which starts by uh, taking on positive values. But then after 4, it starts being negative. And in fact, if I gave you the formula for this particular uh, sequence, you'll see that it is going to be negative always after 4. So from here on, the function is always negative, And therefore, we're going to say that this particular sequence is going to be eventually negative. You may have noticed that I'm going to alternate between function and sequence. Um, that's uh, f for two reasons. Number one is sometimes I get mixed up. And number two is that uh, the two terms in this context are interchangeable. Remember, a sequence is a function. So I can uh, correctly refer to it either way. But remember, we're still talking in the context of sequences. That means a very restricted domain only to uh, integer numbers. Another concept that we're going to be using uh, in relation to sequences is, is a concept that we have seen before in the concept in the context of regular functions, but we haven't really done much with it except a little bit with uh, limits in some situation. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more important in the context of sequences, mostly because limits are in fact the most important thing about sequences. Remember, what we're asking is what happens to the terms of the sequence as n becomes large. So we're going to be looking at limits quite a bit. And the concept is the following. We're going to say that the sequence is bounded if all the terms of the sequence are between two numbers. So they're always between some lower boundary, lowercase b, and some upper boundary, capital uh, B. So that means that um, Again, all the, all the dots here at the graph are going to be in that horizontal strip. They're never going to go out of there. So if all the dots are going to be between some kind of strip, between two finite numbers, then we say that the, the sequence is bounded. Because the key question of sequences is what happens when n goes to infinity, again, we're going to be dealing with limits as n goes to infinity. And that means we're going to be looking at the con con concept of uh, convergence. In fact, the whole question that we asked about the sequence, what happens when uh, n goes to infinity, when n becomes large without any bounds and goes to infinity, is really a limit question. Okay, So we're going to say that the sequence is convergent to a number l if eventually, that means from some point on, the difference between the terms of the sequence and this number L are less than epsilon for any small number epsilon we choose. Okay, now this is the, this epsilon is a Greek letter, and it is the standard uh, choice of a symbol in mathematics when you're trying to denote a small positive number. So what we're saying is that a sequence is convergent to a number L if the terms get closer and closer and closer to L. And you can tell that this is basically the uh, idea of a limit. It, right? So in other words, uh, or looking at this graphically, so let's say this is the sequence that we're looking at. So we may be asking, all right, is that 
value, that horizontal value, the limit of this sequence as the sequence keeps going towards infinity. And what that means is that if I go far enough, is it true that all the values of the sequence are going to be within a small strip around that number L, no matter how small that distance is. So if I go further and further away, I may be able to make those two horizontal lines closer and closer, and I'll still have that from some point on, all the dots of that sequence will be within that little strip. So again, this is a bit of a visualization of this idea, but if you think about it, this is just uh, the good old um, concept of a limit. So what we're asking is that a sequence is convergent if the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to L. Uh, the one difference here is, again, some of the methods that we may have used to compute um, limits for regular functions may not apply here because when we have a sequence for instance we cannot do anything having to do with derivatives right we don't uh, we cannot compute a derivative that there is no slope here it's just isolated points so we'll have to look at it on the one hand keeping in mind the same uh, basic concepts but at the other hand uh, trying to modify it according to this situation once we have the concept of convergence, of course, we can have the concept of divergence. Okay, so we can define similarly for divergence. And remember, there is two kinds of divergences. Okay, first one is divergence to infinity. So a sequence can be divergence to infinity, meaning that the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence goes to positive infinity or maybe even to negative infinity. But we can also have a different kind of divergence, which is the situation where that limit simply does not exist and is not even going to infinity. So a sequence that may be bouncing up and down and doing all kinds of strange things. So these are the question of whether a sequence is convergent or divergent, and if it is convergent, what it converges to are the key questions about a sequence.